What's up guys, it's Brad here from Keepers of the River, tying up a streamer for you tonight. It's a popular streamer here in the northwest and western states, and I haven't been able to find any fly tying videos of it or any good tutorials, so we're going to do it for you guys tonight in the way that we tie it. Um, it might be a little bit different the way that you see it in fly stores, but tonight we will be tying the Sheila Sculpin. This is a great sculpin pattern, it's a lighter sculpin pattern, uh, still has enough weight to get it down. I'm in the water column. Uh, we use these uh, with really good luck. Uh, South Fork Boise, the Owyhee, the Boise River in town, but pretty much any tailwater or any place that fish are going to eat some other fish or eat sculpins, this fly really does really well. So, to start out, we're going to be using, um, I'm using GSP thread in all of GSP 100 olive um, thread. I like gel spun thread, especially for streamers, because it is nearly unbreakable and you can really put some torque down on your materials while you're tying. So, um, start the hook eye and uh, put a little thread base. Um, and then what we're gonna be doing next is adding our barbell eyes. These are Spirit River Dazzle Eyes in 530 seconds. This is just gold color. Uh, it doesn't have any eyeballs on it, just a plain gold uh, barbell eye. So you wanna add it up front but you want to leave yourself a little bit of room behind the eye to add, uh, to finish up the head when we get to that step. So leave yourself a little bit of room. <clears throat> and then tie, use whatever technique you use to secure your barbell eyes. We're going to be securing these barbell eyes on top. Because uh, this is going to be riding uh, with the hook point up inverted. So you want to make sure these eyes are on top. So add a liberal amount of thread wraps and torque to get these things on there well. After you've got your barbell eyes on there, go ahead and take your thread towards the back right about to your hook point for now. Uh, just to make sure that these barbell eyes stay on there nice, I like to add just a little drop of super glue as well too. Um, make sure you don't add too much on there. That gel spun thread really soaks up the super glue well, so that'll keep that barbell line down there uh, really tight. So after this point, what we want to do is we're going to add our pine... Uh, Squirrel zonker and, and pine. These are Wapsi uh, squirrel zonkers in natural pine. You can use the olive color as well, though, too. So what we want to do here is take your pine zonker and we're going to actually pierce it on the hook here. And you want to have your tail be about the length of the shank. Take that on there and just pierce it. And then we're going to flip our hook over in the vise. And begin tying here. So we've got our tail pierced. We can just set that towards the back of the hook now and advance our thread right about to our barb on our hook. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple grizzly uh, marabou, or not grizzly marabou, excuse me, grizzly hackle. Um, right here, I'm just using whiting, you know, bugger pack. And this is just all of grizzly hackle tips. And we're going to want these to extend, you know, about a hook gap and a half. And you're going to tie one on the near side and the far side of the hook. Just tie those in there. I get this to play work with me here. Helps if you just kind of strip some of the stuff away and just tie it in like that. So just want these hackle tips protruding on either side. 
and then uh, clip away your excess, just cut it off short. And then from there, we're going to create a little dubbing loop. And we're going to dub our body. Now the body dubbing is a mix of two dubbings. I've got Senyo's laser dub in yellow. And then uh, we've got uh, we've got the uh, Arizona diamond dub in golden olive brown. And you just mix the two of these together, kind of preen them. And that'll give you this kind of, you know, this kind of yellowish kind of golden dubbing that we're going to use for the body. Kind of creates a cool little color for the body. Almost kind of like a little hot spot. And you're just going to put this in your dubbing loop. And then however you do your dubbing loops, you know, if you use a tool, I personally use a little twisting tool here. Put your loop on it. And just spin this dubbing up. Then you can take your thread and advance your thread forward to about the three quarter point. And at this point, you can use your rotary feature if you have it, just to kind of wrap this forward to about the three quarter point or so. And then go ahead and tie this dubbing off for the body. And cut your dubbing loop off. Close. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then you can use um, any kind of tool you have to pick up dubbing. I just have a little piece of Velcro on a, uh, on a toothbrush here. Kind of pick out some of that dubbing. And then at this point, Take your pine squirrel, pull it up over the top, and tie it off just after your body dubbing there. At this point, we're going to grab, this is some UV2 Diamond Bright Red, just some red, uh, Red ice dub will work just fine. And this one, we're not going to do a dubbing loop on. We're just going to dub it onto our thread. We're not going to be adding a whole lot of this stuff. This is just to kind of be a gill spot up front. And then we're going to create a nice little red spot just behind those barbell eyes there, just like that. Um, at this point, now we're gonna tie in just a little bit of wood duck or um, mallard uh, dyed wood duck. And you know, I just like to preen the feather back and basically tie it in you know, right by the tip. You can leave that little tag there, that's just fine. And then just take one wrap is all you're gonna need because these Fibers are usually pretty long and you don't want a whole ton of them. This is just kind of accentuate the front, give it a little bit of natural barring. Then you can cut your feather off close here. Kind of preen all these fibers back. Like so. Then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take um, two grizzly hackles. We have grizzly hackle or grizzly marabou and sand and grizzly marabou and olive as well too. I've got one feather of each. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna match them up by their tips, preen the rest of this stuff back, and tie it in right by the tip, just right in behind those barbell eyes there. And then you can clip off your extra, your tie-in, and we're just gonna take one or two wraps here. right behind the barbell eyes. And then cut 
both those feathers out, preen them back, take another wrap or two just to kind of orientate them back. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that grizzly hackle again on our bugger pack. We're going to prepare a feather by just stripping the lower parts. And we're going to tie that in kind of right on top of those barbell eyes. And right in front of the barbell eyes. I kind of like to do a little crisscross there. And then with this, we're going to do one wrap behind the eyes, and then I like to crisscross and do one wrap in front of the eyes as well too. This looks kind of messy here, but it'll all come together here in a second. Tie those off, preen some of these back, take your thread back to the front of the barbell eyes again. And here you can kind of clip some of these errant fibers that are kind of running wild on us up front. And then we're going to take one more piece. And this is going to be, you know, a fairly smaller piece of the grizzly marabou. Once again, preen it back. Tie it in up front. Clip off your extra and just make one wrap in front of those barbell eyes as well. This is just gonna kinda finish our head up here. Make sure that's nice and secure. Trim that off close. And then peel all these fibers back and create ourselves. Some nice little thread head up front. All right, at this point, you can take your whip finish tool, go ahead and finish the uh, finish the fly up by doing a four or five turn whip finish. And then what I like to do is usually finish this off with a little bit of loon UV or some super glue up top, you know, just to keep those thread wraps nice and tight. And that's your fly right there, the sheet of sculpin. You know, uh, you can match it to the color of your sculpins, you know, in your water. And uh, usually I tie this in olive in this natural color here. Try it out, fish it. Tell us what you think, and be sure to visit us and follow us and subscribe us and do everything that we want you to do, keepersoftheriver.com.